Hi, today I'm going to talk about how you can take experimental traction separation data uh, that you have and make it into a material model that you can use to model cohesive elements and cohesive surfaces in Abacus. So uh, I assume that you have your traction separation data already measured through some type of experiment. And then the key that I want to talk about is how you convert that into these types of tables that you can use in Abacus. So these tables contains an, an elastic traction response where you have a normal stiffness, a, trans, a shear stiffness. And it can be the same or different. Then you need a damage initiation condition that tells you when damage is starting in your material. And finally, a damage evolution response that specifies how the, the material deforms and fails, how damage is evolving during a continuing deformation. And this is really easy to do, how to convert the experimental traction separation data into these types of tables that you can use in Abacus. And I will show you how to do that. So here's my experimental data file that I want to work with in this example. I have a file that contains three columns. We have time, displacement, which is here uh, separation, and the last one is traction. And traction is really the same as stress in this uh, situation. So I have this type of data, and I want to work with this data and make it into a material model, a cohesive uh, material model that I can use in Abacus. So how do I do that? Well, it's very easy. In M calibration, I first read in my experimental data by clicking on the plus sign here. I select my experimental file, and here it is, experimental traction separation file. I click open. And I need to check that the columns are correct. So we already looked at that, time, displacement, and traction. So time, strain, and stress would, is what that would correspond to here. <clears throat> and then I, I want to specify that the type of strain and stress are true strain and true stress in this case. There is really no transverse displacement of these adhesives that we're focusing on here. So we will specify true strain and true stress for this. Uh, once I get back to the main load case dialog box, it's important that I also switch over the loading mode to be confined tension or confined compression. This is a way where you don't have transverse displacements to worry about. So set that to be confined compression in this loading mode here. And that's all you need to do. The data is now read in and you can plot it in M calibration. The Y axis says true stress. But you can think of it as traction if you like, they're equivalent in this case. And true strain here is also uh, just the, the separation in this case. Uh, so, so that's the data. This is now the, the traction separation response. We want to find a cohesive a representation for using Abacus. And how do we do this? Well, it's very simple. We set the material model. We scroll down to the Abacus section. And I'm going to pick Abacus Cohesive Type 1. And um, if I click OK, you will see that there is a predefined model for this in M calibration that has a number of parameters associated with it. And uh, the way this works in M calibration is that they are, uh, they, it will represent this curve using uh, six uh, B spline uh, segments that are located along this curve here. And uh, then it will come up with the, the, <clears throat> the table of response set that you specify into Abacus from those uh, control points. This uh, reason for having a discrete number of control points is that it, it makes the calibration much quicker and easier for you. Um, the first parameter here, number of terms, is how many terms do you want in your table in the end? So if we jump back to my example here, how many table uh, values do I want in my damage evolution table in the end? It doesn't really matter how many you have, but you shouldn't have it too small. In this case, 20 seems like a reasonable number. Max separation is how far can this adhesive be stretched? Uh, how much separation can you apply before it fully breaks? And that is measured from the damage initiation point, which is around here in this case. So the x-axis displacement from here to here is around 0 0.5. So that value is about 0 0.5. E is the initial stiffness of this curve. Uh, and, and we look at this, we'll see that this is actually much too high. The stiffness is about 1 divided by 0 0.1. So it should be about 10. So maybe I'll make this a little smaller just to make it quicker to calibrate. 
the stress in it is the value that uh, for the, the damage initiation. So uh, what is the value for damage initiation? It's around 1, not around 100. Well, we might as well just make it point one, uh, 1 here then. This delta D values is how much the damage is increasing as the displacement, separation displacement is increasing. So these are all positive. They're all between 0 and 1, and they will be normalized in the end. So we may as well just keep them something like this. This is where the software will find these for us to match this specific curve that we have in our example. So if you click just run once, we'll see that this is what it looked like uh, <clears throat> with this particular setup that we have. We see the predictions are in dashed lines and it's too high, but otherwise it's kind of trends. The trends are relatively good. We can now let M calibration find the actual parameters for us. Uh, I'm just going to pick the extensive automatic method with the default settings here, and I'm just going to run that a little bit. And I'm going to click on optimization progress. We can see how the error of the uh, calibration is changing as the software is manipulating these numbers. You can also see the numbers jumping around a little bit here on the left as it tries to optimize this for us. And it looks really good already. We don't necessarily need to uh, worry about some of the uh, sort of discrepancies here. These are not so accurate experiments. There may be slightly different variability from specimen to specimen. Um, if you did repeated tests, which is always a good thing to do. So I'll stop it here manually, as you noticed, uh, just to see that this, this is um, as good as we're going to get in this case. We'll see that predictions are really good overall. It captures not only the, the stiffness, the onset of damage, and then, then the evolution of damage uh, for this particular material. Once we're done with this, we can then save our file, but uh, I'm just going to export it so we can then take a look at the results and save it to a uh, file. I guess we call it untitled. And uh, here is our file that we just created. So this file has two uh, portions to it, actually a little bit more. It's, it has the information that we're looking for in different sections. So first at the top, is for cohesive elements. If you want to use cohesive elements in Abacus, you need to have a actual material definition, star or star material. You have a density definition that it should be proper if you want to use it in Abacus explicit. Then you have an elastic traction uh, response. This is how stiff it is in, in, uh, in the normal mode versus shear mode. So the M calibration, you notice, didn't ask if it was shear or normal. So you can repeat this process that I just went through for normal data, and then you have traction separation and shear data, you get the table that will have the properties in shear. So these would be for shear, the two shear directions, and this will be for the normal directions. So you do this for each file, and then you combine them in the end to get the, the overall response. The next definition here is damage initiation. I, I like the max S option here. And that gives you the, the stress at onset of damage in the normal direction in, and in the two shear directions. Again, you would need to do this in multiple uh, shear modes, tension and shear, or mixed mode if you're interested in that, to, to get uh, more information uh, about that. And then you combine those files once you're done. The third and last step here is the damage evolution. And uh, here I use a type displacement and softening tabular. So this is the tabular representation of how the damage is evolving uh, during the formation in this case. And that's the whole definition for the cohesive element. If you're interested in cohesive surfaces, which is another option now because that's listed at the bottom of this file. So then you would have to define the cohesive surfaces according to these uh, definitions. You wouldn't use both. You would pick either cohesive elements or cohesive surfaces, obviously. But for cohesive um, surfaces, you need surface behavior, pressure over closure. Then cohesive behavior, uh, uh, I like this uh, original context type uncoupled. And then you specify the, the stiffnesses in the normal and the shear directions, which are then, the, these are determined by M calibration. The damage initiation conditions are the same as for cohesive elements. The damage evolution are also the same, and here they are. And then you would define, so that's listed here at the bottom, how you define, uh, assign these uh, cohesive surface properties 
into your surface uh, definition in Abacus. So that's really all there is to it. Um, I hope you found this uh, interesting and useful. I showed you how easy it is. If you want to uh, work with a mixed mode a type of damage, uh, then there is another article that I have on polymerfm.com that talks about how you can combine these into a mixed mode prediction tool. Uh, but that's uh, something you will read on in this article, not in this video. Um, 